This activity is made possible by the voters of Minnesota through a Minnesota State Arts Board Operating Support Grant, thanks to a legislative appropriation from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and a grant from the Wells Fargo Foundation, Minnesota. Hi, I'm Allison Young, and welcome to the Schubert Club Music Museum Mini. I'm here to talk to you about the flute. It's my favorite instrument. It's super fun. And you hear flutes in so many settings. You hear them in orchestras, in bands, marching bands, folk uh, ensembles, jazz ensembles, even in outer space. And the flute is the oldest instrument ever made. And this is true. Archaeologists uncovered a bone flute that's 45,000 years old. Imagine that. That's Stone Age man. And what's really cool about that is it means that music was a part of culture at the earliest time that human beings were on the earth. Right now you can hear a little bit of me playing a bone flute. It's one in a museum in New Zealand. It's a Maori instrument. And actually there's a lot of rain happening too. But listen how cool this sound is. So the flute is part of the woodwind family. It uses the wind to play, but clearly it's not made of wood. It's actually part of a larger family called the aerophones. And aerophones are ones that make a column of air vibrate and that disturbance makes a sound. But in the case of the flute, you don't use a string or a reed. Now you can make a really simple flute at home with a bottle. So this bottle is 20 ounces and it's a water bottle. And all I've done is I've emptied all of the water and kind of cleaned it out and I can play it like a flute. I've got a pretty good sound because I've played flute for a long time, but if you're playing it for the first time, let me talk a little bit about how you do it. Um, you purse your lips in a certain way to make what's called an embouchure. Now, embouchure is a French word that means up, uh, to bring your lip up, but it literally means how you create the lips to make a sound on something like a, an aerophone, any kind of wind instrument where you use your lips. Now, the embouchure is French, so if you spoke in an outrageous French accent and said bonjour, all of a sudden you have a perfect embouchure for the flute. Mm. Hear how good that sound is? Now, I'm not blowing into the bottle or over. I don't get any sound. I'm kind of blowing at the edge of the bottle. I'm breaking the air at the back edge of this opening mm. to make a sound, and that pitch is a G. So if you wanted to play a little duet with me, get your bottle and make some sound. So to make things simple, I'm just going to talk about the transverse flute, something that's held to the side. And all cultures had transverse flutes. I mean, think about it. Have you ever seen a picture of the god Krishna in India? He has a flute that's held to the side. It was said to be the celestial sound that he was playing. Also back in medieval times, you can see flutes held this way, way back in like the 1100s. Here's a flute that I got recently from Lahore, Pakistan. Now it's new, I bought it recently, it's bamboo, but it's the similar kind of style of something that's very ancient. And the point about the flute is that you have the top here that's closed, the little part that you blow into that makes all of the air go down, and then these holes. pretty sound, it's lovely, but you know what? It's very, very limited. Because you only have these holes, you can make maybe chromatic scales by opening them slightly, but it's hard to do and it's hard to play fast. So over time, what people wanted to do was add more possibilities to the fingerings where you, where you could change the pitches 
by adding keys or making the instrument um, longer and having them in different spots. And that's when things get really, really interesting. You start to get into the time of Bach. Now you see this flute is quite similar to what we heard with the little tiny flute from Pakistan and ones that you see from ancient days. It really only has holes for your fingers, but it has one key here. Check it out. It's a lever. Lever's like the easiest kind of mechanical thing to make. This really increased the possibilities of notes on the instrument because you had this lever in a place where you couldn't reach your hand, you were able to play many, many more notes. So it's a big jump when you're going from an instrument that had basically no keys to this one that is just filled with keys. And what happened were a couple of important things in history. First of all, we had the Industrial Revolution. We had a chance to be able to bend metals and make pistons and mechanical things work much better because of the machinery and because of the technology. And um, we also were able to build out of metals which um, are more durable and um, can withstand kind of the, the banging of the hands on the instrument. And so it was a guy named Theopold Böhm. He was a German and he created this key system and what's really important about it is again, like that lever on the Baroque flute, you were able to play notes that were further away than your fingers could reach to. So this note down here, we're really, really low on the flute. I can hit that key and it'll hit a, a fingering way below where I can reach. Or this one, I press this finger down and it puts three keys down all the way up the instrument. And this was very important because then you could play very easily chromatically, or all 12 notes of the instrument. Also what happened during this time, which was so cool, is that they started making instruments out of metal. So this is around the turn of the century, so about uh, 1890 into the early 1900s. This one's made out of silver. They also make them out of gold and platinum. Now why would you want to make an instrument out of a metal? Well, because it's louder and it has a pingier, kind of sweeter sound. And loud really mattered because if you played in something like a symphony orchestra, your sound would be able to cut through all of those instruments. The other thing is that they widened the range of the flute. So you could go all the way from a low note, somewhere in the middle, and then super high. So another really cool thing about the keys, you can see my hands fall off them nicely. They have this um, cup that they touch. So they're no longer going on a, on a um, tube, but they're going on something flat. So they're able to really close it solidly. And the hole can be so much larger than your finger could cover. And that made the instrument much more ringing and actually the intonation, the sound of each pitch more correct. Underneath the keys, you have felt covered by an organic skin, and that allowed for the key to close really solidly, and for the most part, very quietly, so that you could play lots of notes without anybody really being able to tell what you were doing. And there was one other change that happened over the years. They started to make the instrument portable. I've just taken it apart. So this is obviously the head of the instrument. It's the top. And there's like this little lip plate on it. The lip plate made it easier for me to say that bonjour, put my embouchure here, and make a sound. So much easier to make a sound on the head of a modern instrument than it is on the older ones. This part at the end is called the foot. And what do you think this is? The body. Pretty simple, and that helped you put it away in a case and be able to carry it with you so it wasn't all put together and you had to carry it everywhere. The way you actually play a wind instrument is not only with your air, but you start notes with your tongue. Kind of like you're saying the word tongue. T See, it has a really sharp beginning. And then I can tongue those one after another. But because there's only so fast I can go, 
I can flip my tongue. So I'm saying something like taka 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 and I get really fast. Pretty quick. And if I even want to go faster than that, I can flutter my tongue or flutter the glottal in my throat. Just kind of a cool sound that a lot of contemporary composers use. They even use things like singing into the flute. Which is sort of funky and you use it in jazz and stuff like that. And so I'm going to put those things together for a really pretty piece of music from Bizet's Carmen. This is the entract and everything starts with an articulation, a breath and that tongue. But you see, I only used the tongue at the beginning. All of that was played slurred. That means it's legato. That means it's one line of air, as though I'm not changing anything. I'm just singing through the line. What else did you hear? I'm not going like this in the sound. I'm going like this. It's called vibrato. I'm actually vibrating the air to make it sing. Anytime you hear a fine singer, even if they're in a rock group or an opera, they all slightly waver the air to give a little bit of color. A lot of that's done on the flute. And if you noticed in between, I took a big giant breath of air. Why do you think I did that? Well, it's a wind instrument, right? I need a lot of air. But the flute, because you blow so much across the flute, you use more air to play this instrument than the tuba. You gotta be strong to play the flute. Thanks so much for joining me to learn more about the flute. Be sure to visit the Schubert Club Music Museum and learn about all of the instruments. Right now you're hearing a little bit of me and my friend Vicki Selden playing a work by Carlos Costadino. Thanks so much.